taking huge tolls on America's kids. The mental health epidemic among teens has skyrocketed as big tech is accused of targeting them to make big money. Now, the Senate Judiciary Committee held a hearing this week on how to better protect kids online. Senator Josh Hawley proposing a social media ban for those under 16. I just say as a parent, it would put me much more in the driver's seat if the law was you couldn't have a phone. I'm sorry, you couldn't get on social media till 16. I mean, it would help me as a parent. Sure, the pandemic didn't help either with more children getting online. They were told to in many cases. According to a recent census, 38% of kids between 8 and 12 are using social media every day. Social media bullying is out of control too. The videos you're about to see are graphic. They involve two kids being bullied and attacked. One involves a nine-year-old girl who was uh, beat up uh, by a 15-year-old boy on a bus. Nobody helped and said it was recorded by social media. The school's advice to the mom of that beaten girl Enroll your kid in another school. No joke. The other video involves a 14-year-old girl attacked by four other students in the hallway. The video uploaded to TikTok. One girl even sent text messages to that innocent teen about beating, eventually pushing her to kill herself, and she did. Joining us now is Tom Kirsting, a family therapist and the author of this book that is just out. It's called Raising Healthy Teenagers, Raising Healthy Teenagers, and it's all about this equipping your child to navigate the pitfalls and dangers of teen life. Uh, Tom, great to see you. Thanks for having me. That video, sadly, is not shocking to you. No, it's not. I mean, you see this all the time. I talk about this in the book, actually. We have, right now, we have a bit of an epidemic of oppositional defiant behavior and violence, right, with kids as ex uh, exemplified in those videos. And part of that is, think about what kids are consuming all day long. Every single thing's on camera nowadays, right? It funnels down to social media, and kids are marinating in all this angry, bad assault of uh, content. And what that does to the brain over time, it kind of desensitizes people to this. What changed in 2012? 2012 was when smartphones became mainstream. And from that point on, the mental health epidemic among kids has skyrocketed. And you know that because you're a therapist in school. Yeah. And you used to have one kid once in a while. How did that change with the iPhone? So starting back in 2012, I was still working at a high school and had my private practice, which I currently still have. Um, back then... If a kid was having an emotional moment, they would go to the nurse and then the kid would come to me. And I would get, you know, a handful of those, like a year. After 2012, I would get a, a couple of those a day. And at my private practice, I started getting more kids, in uh, middle school age kids, with major anxiety issues starting after 2012. And I hadn't seen that prior to that. So when you see the bullying that takes place, it used to be the kid, no one ever supports it, but it used to be the big kid in school harassing people, stealing lunch money. But now the harassing comes online. And it's intimidating because it's, oh, it seems omnipresent. So that girl that we watched killed herself in her closet because that video was out and about. And they had a town hall about this. The superintendent released from his job but keeps his money, which is unbelievable. I want you to see what happened. Here's a little bit from this town hall, this one girl saying she's experiencing the same thing. My name is Danielle. I am also talking board. I am also so many other names that people have called me over the years. And you guys are fantastic. I am sorry for screaming and yelling at you. However, I have tried so hard. I have tried so hard to just talk. To just try for you guys to listen to me. She's bullied. That's the same school. It's tough to watch. It's sad. And that's New Jersey, too. I worked in a public school, high school in New Jersey for many years. And uh, New Jersey has the most comprehensive anti-bullying law. It's called HIV, Harassment, Intimidation, and Bullying Policies, where schools are required to do an investigation if there's an act of bullying. So I'm not sure I can't speak to so you. So you get the best rules, to get the best laws. You have high-profile schools in rich neighborhoods. We're still on the outside. That's why you back... Uh, in your book, too, you talk about not having social media to you 16. I, I, I love this, this bill that uh, Josh always trying to put out because, you know, it's a lot of pressure on parents, you know, because they kind of, they see every other kid getting phones. They feel like their kid's going to get left out. I, I agree with this. I think if we could delay it till 16, we're going to see a reversal. But you have an idea. Send every kid home with a sheet that they will not have their kid have an iPhone until they're 16. Make every kid... Every family in that area who go to that school sign it. Yeah, so I created something in my prior book, Disconnected, um, called the Phone-Free School Zone Pledge. So imagine you're a, a parent of a kindergartner. You get that pack at home over the summer, and in there is this pledge. I agree not to purchase a smartphone for my kid until late adolescence. All the parents start talking about it. They're going to sign that at that age. 
And all the school has to do is just send out reminders. And what can happen year after year is now you could create a community where most of the kids don't have phones going into middle school, and that would make a big, big difference. Do you think this could be like drunk driving? Do you think it could be like smoking, where kids get the message and a generation grows up different than the previous? I do. I mean, you know, it's coming out now. I've been talking about this all, you know, for years now. But I think, you know, we did that with drunk driving. Kids are not drinking and driving. It's not, not, not cool anymore. And I, and I think, you know, we can get there with this problem. Raising Healthy Teens, it's out this week. Yep. Uh, thanks so much for doing it. And a book signing I have March 4th in North Hill, New Jersey, at Books and Greetings. All right, I've been there. Books and Greetings is yep. fantastic. All right, go, go check it out. All right, Tom, congratulations. I appreciate it. And